Yeah, thanks again uh, for the nice introduction there. And uh, hello, everyone. I'm excited to share the uh, some of the Walmart's initiatives that we are doing internally and in this great forum. So, but before that, I just want to kind of uh, say, uh, introduce uh, some of the cool things outside of the technology uh, Walmart is doing. So I'm quite sure that many of you are uh, aware of the Walmart uh, uh, name, um, especially in the US because it is uh, within 10 miles distance for 90% 90 for, 90 of the US population. So some uh, interesting facts about Walmart supporting communities. Um, we have seen COVID-19 kind of bothered us for the last two years and it was painful. During the pandemic, Walmart worked closely with uh, federal governments, state governments, and insurance companies and labs to expand the testing, right? So that we can do more testing for the more people. And we did testing for hundreds of thousands of people in Walmart stores. And Walmart's pharmacists did the uh, uh, vaccinations and va uh, vaccinations were available across 5,100 uh, locations in across the US. And Walmart and Walmart Foundation, they contributed uh, to the COVID-19 cause and donated $43 million um, um, around the globe. And this money was in cash and in kind donations to various organizations involved in the communities. And apart from that, Walmart also donated $1.4 billion to um, various other causes. And uh, again, one more. Um, 745 million pounds of food was distributed in globally 2020. And uh, out of that 627 million pounds of food was donated by Walmart stores, clubs and distribution centers. <clears throat> I was excited about those facts and I wanted to share with the community. Um, Walmart is basically a, a retail store, a retail business, but we are increasingly growing into uh, e-commerce and then online shopping. And uh, Walmart is constantly innovating and then trying to find ways to serve customer better. Some of the things are like drone delivery. Um, we are trying out drone delivery in the uh, Arkansas, some places, and uh, it is in partnership with DroneUp. And we are also using driverless trucks between our uh, Walmart stores and then the distribution centers. This was also in Arkansas. And we are partnering with uh, Gatik on that. Um, some places we are trying it. It's not like everywhere yet. Um, Walmart is also into blockchain space where uh, we are using it for the finding the contaminated food sources uh, fast. When and if that happens, contamination of the food, uh, it is extremely important for us to make sure that we find the source of it quickly. This is to kind of control the um, uh, impact and then also saving the wastage. Earlier, it used to take seven days for us to find the source of the contamination and that with the blockchain usage as part of the, uh, in, the in our systems, uh, now we can do it in a couple of seconds. So it really helps a lot in finding the contaminated food sources quickly. Now, coming to the technology, um, Walmart um, uses uh, open source extensively across the stack from top to bottom. And Walmart is from the, even from the leadership side, fully committed to the, uh, contributing to the open source. And we are kind of started more activity there. And uh, one example is the Leaf platform. Uh, Leaf platform was open sourced last year, uh, actually by our EVP, Kobe Avito in this, uh, Linux Foundation conference. This LEAF platform is a complete lifecycle management of uh, eBPF programs. And uh, there are lots of goodies with it, which is like, it is cloud agnostic, and then it can do cool program chaining and um, out of the box monitoring, runtime configurations. We internally in Walmart, we are using it uh, for various use cases. Uh, some of them are like uh, security use cases, we use it and observability, we can get a better observability from eBPF then. 
um, layer seven. And uh, we also use it for the traffic mirroring, traffic uh, splitting, and then package prioritization. There are very many use cases we are actively using the leaf in Walmart. Now it is shared with the community. Uh, so the packages, uh, the, our plan is to also increase our open sourcing uh, when it comes to EPP of package repository. And uh, there are many components that we internally have. We are planning to open source them with a plan. And our request to the community is to join us and uh, build, uh, help building the uh, great uh, EPP of package repository. So one step towards that uh, uh, open sourcing is uh, XLV. Um, XLV is a EBP of based uh, load balancer. We are replacing our level four load balancers in our private cloud with the XLV actually. And uh, this XLV is built on top of Tetron and EBP of. On top of it, we have the um, configuration metrics management and health uh, checks, et cetera. We built a lot of functionality around it and uh, made it a lot more futuristic. And coming to the application node side, we use an agent there and with a DSR functionality. DSR is a direct server return. This is means that whenever the application sends the response back to the client, it doesn't need to go through again XLB. It can directly go to the client. So that helps in uh, latency improvements. And we also package that uh, application node usually with uh, chaining a couple of more modules. In this case, uh, rate limiting and connection limiting along with the um, other stuff in the ELB, based, ELB agent. This helped us uh, kind of protecting the nodes uh, from unwanted or unexpected uh, traffic coming into the nodes. So it will just try to make sure that the resources are not overwhelmed uh, beyond its capacity. So these things, if you look at it, it is not really the just load balancer. It is more about um, extended load balancer features. So this one, uh, XLB will be uh, open source soon. Um, we are doing some efforts towards that and it will come probably in a few weeks. And on the edge computing side, Walmart is constantly looking into the opportunities for um, edge computing. And uh, one of the things that we did last year was queuing. Uh, queuing was completely implemented in the CD and edge layer using the compute and other features there. This really helped us handling the uh, peak traffics and uh, I mean, super peaks. And uh, last uh, holiday season was well run. And that's one of the reasons is because of uh, we put queuing there and protected where it is vulnerable. So the problem that we wanted to solve is we have sales, uh, sometimes on the special items, maybe they are new or they are in super demand. Whenever we announce those sales, we see tremendous amount of traffic coming to the our site when the sale starts. So the problem is when so many people come for this item, we see 50X to 100X normal traffic uh, during the that, uh, time, peak time. The peak goes very sharp. The ramp up time for the peak is very quick in seconds. And then it won't last, the peak doesn't last for long and then it will quickly come down to reasonable levels uh, within a few minutes. But the problem is the peak is 50 to 100 X high, depends on what the item is. So this kind of problems cannot be solved by using um, the uh, traditional pre-scaling because we are talking about several X and uh, it's not practical to, when we are thinking about 50 and 100 X, we don't, it's not economical and then practical either. So that's not a solution. And then there is another thing like maybe what about auto scaling? Um, auto scaling, the problem is in this case, what we saw was the ramp up time is few seconds, right? It just quickly goes up and the overall peak time doesn't last long. It will be for a few minutes only. 
So this is a problem we cannot solve by uh, auto scaling or pre-scaling. So we uh, came up with the solution, the queuing solution, which is basically built um, with Walmart specific uh, components and then just uh, tightly coupled with a lot of systems we had, but we built it at the edge and the CDN edge so that that peak traffic doesn't come to the Walmart uh, network. So we we successfully handled and stopped the customer at the edge and then allowed some control traffic to the our nodes based on our capacity and then whatever was the plan. So this one really worked out well for um, during the last holiday period. And this is this gives a general perspective on how the queuing from customer perspective. Uh, I can't go into more detail, so I'm just giving this whatever is makes uh, uh, gives a better understanding. So when a customer likes to buy a hot item that is on sale, they click on the item and then they go through two phases in the queuing experience. One is the waiting phase, another is the purchasing phase. In the waiting phase, um, customer will know like what is the possibility of getting that item. So there will be some kind of message and then they get a timer. This timer tells how long they have to be in the waiting phase before they go to the uh, purchasing phase. So this, um, when customer uh, time times out on the timer or it, their turn comes, they go to purchasing phase. In the purchasing phase, we give another timer so that the customer has enough time to check out. The important thing is um, when customer is in the purchasing phase, we make sure that that item is allocated to the customer and then blocked for them. So behind the scene, whatever is needs to be done on the application side, we do that. And uh, this purchasing phase has timer when that expires, it releases the item. If the customer does check out before that, then it will be, they'll be successful. So this purchasing phase is just like we can say, uh, keeping a physical item into the physical cart in a physical store, just like that is with you until you check out. This itself changed a lot uh, during our sales because this has given a lot of power to the customer to kind of not to rush and then try to compete with other users on the web. This is more about they can do more peacefully all this shopping. So this is all implemented on the uh, CDN edge. So, and we eventually might even take it to further down the lane, but that's uh, at this point, that's how we implemented it. How this helped Walmart? It helped both customers and then the business very well. Um, it's a great customer experience because we got a lot of feedback uh, saying that earlier, the sale used to end very quickly and within a few seconds and uh, mostly it is bots or some other uh, things by them and then real customer were kind of very painful. They always get to check out and then get an error there. So customer experience improved, predictable buying in the purchasing phase, they are guaranteed the item. And customer has a full flexibility where they can join more queues where if there are queued items or they can drop out the queue and then give up on their own want it or they can just shop something else. So customer wise, this gives a lot of value there. On the business side, it is a controlled infra scaling because when we are talking about 50X, 100X, which is not practical, we could handle it very well. And with a limited scaling, that is what we planned for and then made sure that funnel is allowing that much. And the real-time inventory check, every customer is kind of associated with the inventory item when they check out. So there is nothing like we ran off, we ran out of inventory at the end of checkout. So that was really helpful. And uh, we sold to the real customer. We tried to, we put best efforts to filter the bots. And then this is a constant cat and mouse game. Um, but overall, uh, it was a successful sales. We ended up with, and we ended up with uh, happy customers. So yeah, that's all I wanted to share. And these two are interesting projects. So we finished recently and wanted to share. Thank you all.
Any questions? Oh, very, very nice. Uh, great, great stuff, Ravi. I mean, it is amazing that uh, if you can stop sharing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it is amazing that from, you know, what what retail has gone through and what happens behind the scenes. We're so excited that Walmart has become, you know, a tech first company. And, and uh, more importantly, you know, using open source as pillars. There is one question um, that has come up uh, from the attendees. And again, you know, please ask Q&A on, on your Q&A box. We'll answer live as much as possible. Uh, given that you have multiple stores in distributed location and your edge is getting enabled, are you thinking of becoming an edge service provider? Now you don't have to answer it because it's a strategic question, but the concept is fairly interesting. Yeah, as you said is right. I think I can't answer that. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I would say. This is a tough question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, anyway, good. Uh, no, but we really appreciate the um, the leadership, uh, and you know we've seen uh, eBPF and Leaf specifically grow significantly in the community, in the open community, and especially you know it. I, if I understand correctly, it it uh, was able to withstand the onslaught of the heavy Thanksgiving after uh, Thanksgiving sale, uh, you know, and the Christmas sale. So congratulations, uh, you know, open Thank source you. works. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the great keynote. Appreciate it. Bye.